Hey, everybody, it's Conscious Medium, Brandon Russ, and we're here today with such a treat here on Stream of Consciousness. We have the the, the Reverend, you've got a bunch of names in front of you, but <laughs> Reverend Judy Weaver, <laughs> who is a shaman. She is also someone that works with light beings. She is someone that does uh, pragmatic healing within, within the work of the, you know, the realm of the earthbound work um the beyond the earth work and really kind of ties it all together judy thank you so much for joining me here on stream of consciousness how are you i am fabulous and i'm so excited to be here today i know i'm a good time so anyway so one of the <laughs> things one of the things like right out of the gate we always talk about we talk about a couple of different things as we go along i got to bring up first and foremost and we'll get into the nitty-gritty about how you became a shaman and all the people you contact with and all that other good stuff but we got to talk about the purple in that picture behind you it's amazing is that like a print it, picture did you it is a print it is it's it amazing is a Yes, yes, it is. She is absolutely amazing. And when I found her, it was like, oh, that is me. That is all of me. That is that is me out in the universe. That is me with the Mother Earth. That is me with the water, the, working with all the different elementals, the energies, the fairies, the angels, everything all encompassed together in one beauty. And um, so she had to come home with me. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the idea of like the light being and and, you know, and I find this often with people that really, truly do this work is everything about you becomes you. I mean, and and you have dribs and drabs of like your root. You want to bring that forward. You have dribs and drabs of other elements that like you learn along the way. Um, how did you kind of evolve? Like what got you started into your spiritual path and what was the moment that it really clicked for you? Well, it was back in the early 90s, and I'd always been a person of faith, and I had spent, you know, my teen years in Florida, so Southern Baptist was my primary religion, and at this time, I was living in Connecticut. Wait, and... you, you, wait you moved on from Southern Baptist? Like, I think we're given, like, <laughs> a governor when we come to this earth that's like, oh, I'm Catholic. Like, Catholics, we, it was like jailbreak. Like, 1993 hit, 94, it's like, oh, did you hear what the priest did? And we were all like, we're out. We're like, oh, my gosh, we got a priest. <laughs> But Southern Baptists are just like, yeah, and who cares if somebody did that? You will get back into, yeah. I, so. I'm going there, I can assure you. Wow, wow. <laughs> so your evolution out of this, you know, and again, what I'm really kind of alluding to is really kind of the strict doctrine of Southern Baptist, you know, and kind of how not only are you indoctrinated to it, but how did you wrestle with that? And then how did you evolve out of it? Or, or through well, it, rather, it, not this was, it all goes together. So my yeah. father had been diagnosed with cancer, had a very large tumor that had burst through his intestines and he'd be given three months to live. Went to bed, normal night, woke up, st sat straight out of bed. And I very clearly heard, you've got to go to Florida and do a healing on your father. And I looked around the room and I'm like, uh, who said that? <laughs> and then I'm like, but God, dad's an atheist. You, so you, this was a, you, you had the Metatron moment. I, I had the Metatron meta moment. That's I did. Metatron moment. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and and it was like it was uh, and um it was so because again, light workers deal with a lot of abuse and things, and so the, that was mm -hmm. all into play. And my faith was my faith, certainly not my father's. And being Southern Baptist, people didn't be doing that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I mean, that's why. You know, it's it's funny. I remember in my in my coming up, I had, you know, I could be like, oh, well, you know, I would make the rationalization because I was too smart for my own good. And I would just say, well, how do you know the difference between the Holy Spirit and my spirit guides? And they would just go like, well, I don't I don't know. So let me get this straight. You know, in the Bible, they can speak in tongues and be influenced. But I can't say Hey, your mother's your grandmother says hi. Like I, I don't get it. Like I, I was pointing out the inconsistencies <laughs> with it. But Southern yeah. Baptist is more of the obey or 
punishment. You go to like, hell. It yeah, was retribution you know. based. Not that Catholicism isn't, but it's it's retribution based. Um, did you catch flack for it when you started to kind of come out? Like, how did you? I would imagine. Well, like at this time, I was in Connecticut, dominant. so so I was in Connecticut, so I was in a different, but I was in a northern congregational church, and so I prayed. I'm like, all right, God, I'll do this. You know, my dad was open to it. I said, but I needed to have some anointing oil, so I went to church on a regular Sunday. I'm leaving the next day. And I told my pastor, I'm like, well, I need to have some anointing oil. He says, what for? He'd known me for 10 years. He's like, and I'm like, well, I got to go to Florida and do a healing on my father. And he's like, what? In my office. He charges me in. A couple hundred people come into church. I sit down and and he's like, what are you doing, Judy? You know, <laughs> I'm like, God told me I got to bum, 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 bum. And um, so as we sat there for a couple of minutes, he says, well, you could say this. And I'm like, yeah, I got that. And he says, you could do this. And I said, yeah, I got that. Well, after the third time he looked at me and he said, who told you how to do this? And I said, God did. And mm. so he gave me this anointing oil from Jerusalem. I went to Florida. We did this whole ceremony around my father. He continued with medical science, but that ceremony changed our family. He became a man of faith and lived another nine years. So it's not Stop. about. Yes, I know. Well, I mean, profound. And profound. listen, I, I'm going to go ahead and say this. There's two things that I have to point out. First of all, I've now you're my second, you're my second episode. You're only my second. Isn't that what every woman wants to hear? Um, <laughs> that's okay. As long as you don't have any commas in the number, we're all set. Um, <laughs> commas and dots. Um, but it's uh, uh, two things with this. First of all, the second episode. And in the first episode, um, Elizabeth actually mentioned having healing oils, anointing oils. So two for two for anointing oils. I, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And then the second thing is, is how symbolic that it was nine, that it was an end cycle number. And when you say it changed your family, I mean, listen, we all talk about this on the spiritual side of it. Like it's the coming out party. It's the, hey, yeah. aren't I cool? You know, hey, I'm going to go do this. And you can split it right down with a thick knife and say, this half of people aren't cool. The other half of people are cool with me. Um, you know, and, and you always have that section of dismissiveness, but how did the family treat you after they were like, holy crap, Judy's got something. Now, again, you're kind of in the lane of the Lord. I call that the lane of the Lord, Yeah, yeah which is, yeah. which is cool, but it's a step in your evolution. That's what you were ready for. How did people were suddenly ever, they were like, Hey, tell us about this. You know, let's have conversations. A lot of things that happened right prior yeah. to that. My great aunt was getting ready to die and I, I didn't even know how to read music. And I ended up having to channel a song that I had to sing at her funeral and so it was like all these things were coming together at once so it was just a matter of me saying okay whatever I'm here and I'm willing and and my family just plain loved me my younger sister she could always see ghosts and so um you know and my so uh, grandmother did you, did, did you help your sister I don't mean to interrupt but did you help your sister because then then she could openly talk about it like as in like, OK, well, you know, she's channeling and I'm I'm seeing ghosts like we all kind of have a gift. Did, did it make it easier for her? I think it made it easier for her. But then it was just the timing of life and children sure. and families. And, you know, and I'm yeah. running around with three sons and baseball games. And <laughs> you know, when you're in that parenting realm. You're in it. And, you know, working multiple jobs. My my husband at that time was very ill. He'd had a, a heart attack at 27. So he didn't work for many, many years. So it was it, and my life was very chaotic. But one of the things that was so interesting was right before he had the heart attack, I'd gone to the beach and I remember going and picking up a handful of sand. And no matter how much I held that sand, I couldn't hold the sand in. And I very clearly heard during that time. It's about opening yourself and letting yourself be in that presence of holding, not holding tight, but being in that faith of being held. And um, so, yeah, family came around, friends, and it took me a long time to figure out what I was doing, Brandon. <laughs> uh, you know, well, I think, I, you know, I think that's what makes us compelling, you know, as as people that do healing work, whatever the modality is. And I also think that when you start to kind of evolve like this, you notice those little moments. I love how you just told that story because that's such a small moment. I mean, that was maybe what, 12 minutes of your life, if that. 
And then all of a sudden it became so impactful and you've used it whenever you've helped somebody where they're like, you know, my loved one has passed. Well, you were, you know, holding on like this, it's like this. Um, what a great metaphor for anyone that's struggling. What a great metaphor for someone that's accepting change. I, I actually think that most of our work in this work is to help people understand and navigate their changes. You know, I think that is kind of the bigger, the bigger piece to it. And, you know, knowing you and knowing how your sessions go and knowing how, um, you know, when you open up, like you got to trust whatever you're doing, because it's not, I mean, you can do, you can go to a hundred practitioners, you should have a hundred different experiences, but mm -hmm. there's traditionally consistency with about 85% of them. Judy is in that 15% where you're like, what, what was that? Exactly. How did that go? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 amazing because I think that that kind of you know and I don't want to jump the track here a little bit but you know when you develop your technique you know it sounds like you're like okay you pick up these metaphors you pick up these ideas on the flip side of that when you're in session I I mean I I use stream of consciousness this is why I talk about it which is why the podcast is named this I watch you use stream of consciousness in a way where you just surrendered like it was like. You were just like, I'm on vacation. I When you're in session, <laughs> is it a break for you? Like, is it a relief? Because you're, I mean, we always say this, like, oh yeah, it's spirit giving the message. And, I, and I've watched people do that with hints of it and elements of it. You absolutely, absolutely do that. Like you're not in your body when you're doing your work. No, no, uh, I check it, out completely. It, it, yeah. Talk about that. Like, where do you think you go? Why do you think you allow yourself to be so open? Because you're literally just holding the sand for them. Your body is holding the space and you're using the words. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that that kind of came down to when I had gone to Abagina, Brazil. I had another one of those massive, profound moments where crystals were inserted into the palms of my hand, tubing through the top of my head. It very clearly heard, not now, but by Christmas time, it will change. And that's when trance channeling came into play. And I remember sitting out in the river in the kayak saying, I'm yours, take me. And so what I do is I step aside and I, I have a gatekeeper. Everybody has their gatekeeper. I think that they're dormant for a lot of people who don't use them, but that's there to help me channel. And I go and I, I hang out by my gatekeeper while we have yeah. this wonderful, lovely bridge and, and the gazebo. Everybody who wants to comes in, hangs out at the gazebo and they all just march in and they send that healing and that love. We really, I really strive for one at a time. <laughs> Don't don't we all? <laughs> One don't, being at a time. Don't we all? <laughs> y'all y'all take your turn. You know, make myself. You know, mm -hmm. you have to really kind of balance that. Um, but yes, I let them come in. I let them use my voice, my body, oh my the actions. Sometimes the beings have never had an opportunity to speak or to be in a physical, so they get so excited about being able to smell and to see and to feel and and to have emotions and laughing. And if the body does something physical, they're like, "Oh, what was that?" <laughs> yeah, and I, I, you know, and I think I think too, like you just get excited, like you get inspired, you know, when you start to connect and you start to do that work. And, you know, it, it's funny, you, you know, you look for parallels with people like why, why are you, why do your energies track? Why do you end up having conversations and that sort of thing? Um, I, I kid you not, my, my path really entails connecting with nature in this way. I, I was in the middle of the ocean, not the middle of the ocean. I was on the edge of the ocean, actually in New Hampshire. <laughs> Tell me if you've been there. And I was born there. <laughs> I know. That's what I was saying. We're going to talk about your chart in a second. Um, but I had uh, Hampton Beach. My sister lived up there at the time. And we were there on a Memorial Day. And I had this, I just had this wound that wasn't healing. It wasn't, it wasn't infected. It wasn't whatever. And I'm like, I don't get it. But my, it's ruling my life. And I walked out into the ocean, which is the last place you're supposed to go with an open wound. And I put it up there. I said, okay, I go, I'm a Pisces. Come take this away. I give it up to you. Here we go. And the last nine years have been insane. Absolutely insane from becoming as a medium, from making mistakes, from learning lessons, going through a Chiron return. Like I did it all. Like, and if I, if I could touch it, I did. But I think it's amazing that you're talking about walking into 
you know, the waters of Brazil. Oh, and the crystals. Oh, that was another thing. And I was holding crystals while I did it. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you kick that off, do you feel like, do you feel like every healer, every practitioner, everybody that, that does this work in some level has that, a, that moment of epiphany or that moment of changing where they might not like the answer, but the answer is coming. Like, do you see I that do. consistently? I do. And, and, and they don't understand necessarily what it is or what that means to them. And so that's one of the things that I do is I work with a lot of light workers to help them put it together. And, and I do activations with people so that it will align all of those things so that they get clear guidance and understanding mm -hmm. as to it. Cause you know, as well as I do, when it starts right. coming, it's just, it's a fire hose. <laughs> I talk like a whippoorwill's ass. I, I really do. It's, you know, and it's funny because when I get going, you know, I, I I joke around now. Like I let people record their readings with me if I haven't done it on Zoom or something. And, um, you know, and every single time somebody will come in with a notebook and I said, here's what you're going to write in your notebook. You're going to write the date. You're going to write Brandon. You're going to write grandma. And then that's it. And they're like, what do you mean? And I go, I've been doing this for 12, 14 years. Like I'm telling you, I, uh, every journal is like, Oh, look at this. I didn't even write anything down. And I laugh and I'm like, just pull out your phone and let's just record it because you know, you're going to need this stuff later. Um, we, but we it also records that vibration. I always have people record it. They need that vibration that they can draw on at a later point in time. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I always give them a crystal as well, because you want to seal in that vibration. They need to be able to have access it, to it themselves to be able to grow. I think it's an amazing thing when you turn the corner and you start to realize that like your, your technique, how did you develop your technique? Like, did you just listen to spirit and say like, they need a crystal? Um, Spirit is very clear about giving me different things along sure. the way, you know, but it's always evolving and I'm always educating. I'm always continuing to go to school because I can always learn more right now. I'm studying with the Inca medicine people because again, you know, the mm. Peru trip coming up and. Oh yeah. What a segue. Last year. What a segue. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Well, last year I went to Peru, had an amazing journey. Um, yeah. Again, that was an extension of my indigenous culture, you know, of going into the South American aspect. And yes, I am taking two different trips of people uh, the last week of February, beginning of March to Peru, to Machu Picchu. It was such a profound experience. Again, when, awesome. when God calls you or spirit calls you to go to places in the land and you go, things happen to you. I, I ended up meeting, going to this place where there was an animal farm and they had condors and this condor that was 12 foot wide flew over my was head, 12 again? put its talons <laughs> into my hair and pulled it out. It was like... I mean, blessings of the condor. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. So, so obviously that's one of your spirit animals. Like talk it to us is. about that. Like what, how, so do you have this profound, the condor swoops down, grabs your head, was trying to get in your brain. <laughs> I don't know if you know that or not. Instinctually, they like brain. And then, you know, and then you have that. Had you had experiences with condor beforehand? Like, like not with that. condor. That's awesome. Not with Condor, but when um, I had been doing a ceremony on the beach one time for somebody who had passed and a crow flew over and landed on my back. And that was when the shamanic stuff really started to go crazy. So animals have always been with me, trees talking to me. And, and this stuff just got more and more profound. And so I just keep adding into it. Um, and, and you go to these major sacred places and amazing things happen to you. I was channeling all kinds of, of different ancient ones who were there that was in, um, you know, Machu Picchu. When we go back this time, we're staying at a place where up top, they've got some old properties that are ruins that are 900 AD before the Incans. And I'm going to go there yeah. and channel for them. <laughs> Oh, that's exciting. I And, you know, you're going to click on the link below, everybody. Get to know Judy. I think you only have a couple of spots left. Logistically, I, do, I wish I, I could go to this yeah. because I, I, I will tell you, I had my, it's funny, when you and I met, I was on my way out of town to go to, um, to go to Sedona. And you were just like, oh, <laughs> let me tell you what you're about to do. 
<laughs> and I said, I said, what are, uh, you know, and I, I felt it was funny because how we were talking, it was kind of like we were talking through each other on top of yep. each other. And what we were doing was building <laughs> something. It was, it was insane. And it was kind of like two old friends, like meeting in the airport going and da, 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 da. And like, and then saying something like, and you remember Johnny Finnegan? It's like, we recognize each other and Everything. then we were talking about something. So by the end of this, we hatched the plan of getting um, a burying crystals along the shaman line. I was in Sedona. I buried uh, a Herkimer um, quartz, but that wasn't originally what we had talked about. And we both knew what we had talked about wasn't going to happen. <laughs> That's the funniest part, because when I came back, I reached out to you. And I'm like, listen, I know we were supposed to do this, Andra, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, uh, but... I had this Herkimer with me. It was what I felt. It was where I went to. I'm just letting you know. And I buried it. Um, I climbed a mountain for the first time ever. And this is kind of like, I mean, you're part of my healing journey. I hope you realize that. So, Oh, I'm well, excited. Thank you. <laughs> well, and again, true to form, I'm in the ocean, blah, 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 seven surgeries later, infections, all this other stuff. When they finally figured it out, I'm like, and I put the cart before the horse. I planned the, the Sedona trip even before they had even figured it out, but I knew they were going to figure it out and exhausted only a couple of months after major, major surgery, like the kind where they got to go in and do whatever uh, on my feet. They, I literally climbed a mountain. It was a 1600, you know, foot mountain from where, you know, from base to whatever. And it's, you know, like a 75 incline. It's not easy. And when I got up there, that's where I, I buried the Herkimer. And, and listen, if somebody finds it, they find it when they're supposed to. Uh, I dug it just deep enough that, you know, I didn't want to go in mm -hmm. far enough to get to the fire ants because it's still a desert, everybody. I don't know if you know this or not. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, I think the temperature on the day that we climbed was like 53 degrees. It was nice. It was a beautiful day. It That's was shocking. <laughs> well, it was great. Well, it was November, right? Yeah. But yeah. Well, the... I got heat stroke in late October there one time. <laughs> you got to go with me, kid. You got you to gotta, you gotta go when I go. So, but the funny thing is when we got there and, and just a little tip from the pros, it's not, it's not, I mean, the water is an important thing for sure. And of course the space I was at was where uh, Dr. Amoto did all of his water work. So oh. I ask the water to heal me and then I end up there. Come on. Anyways, <laughs> I think I was telling you that story to tell you this one. So when I got up there and I, I did my meditation, I was off from the group a little bit. You know, I dug my plot, I put it in, you know, and I, you know, gave it the pad. I opened it up and I did the four um, directions, actually the six directions, because as above, so below, so below. Yep. You know, I've had good teachers too. And the, the, <laughs> you know, I'm not a shaman by trade, but I've always appreciated it. I mean, you even see the, the dream catcher up back here, which yeah, is one yeah. of our, um, one of my students retired and that's all she makes now. And they're beautiful. She channels them and all that stuff. Um, the dynamic though, for me was that I, along my path, I learned just enough about shamanism to know I had to respect that moment. And that's how I worked with it. Mm -hmm. And when you and I had talked about doing that, I'm like, oh, I'm thinking to myself, like, I hope she's not upset. She just spent money on an Andrew and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. And and the Andrew was really, I think we're supposed to somehow end up in Shasta with you, with it, which is where, which is part of why Shasta actually has its, its you know, value is some unique crystal mining that goes on in that general area. Um but I felt at peace. I felt at ease. Like I knew it was going to be okay. I knew you weren't going to be upset. I knew, you know, all that stuff was going to be cool. We just need to talk about it. Um, but, I, you know, the idea is, is that we're going to draw on the shaman line, these Herkimer crystals to be able to just create the path and be able to tap into that energy whenever. And lo and behold, I had been to Herkimer Diamond the year before and picked up my crystal that I knew I was going to go ahead and be bringing down to Peru with me this time. And Gosh. again, the Mount Shasta was profound. That was my second book that I wrote. Truth Beyond yeah. was all channeled and in guidance information from being at Mount Shasta. So profound. That was when yeah. I met the whole Lemurian population and learned so many things I didn't know. <laughs> You know, I think it, it's so funny. I, you know what I've noticed with my path? I think it's about a destination, but it's really about the people. You know, it's really about the people that you're connected to. And it's to. the path. 
It's about the path. It's about the journey. It's about developing and and gathering all these beautiful little tidbits along the way with all these souls and all of us connecting and evolving and growing and remembering one another. (laughs) And, and, you know, and it's, it's, you know, primarily on this retreat where people that I coached or I, I had strong business dealings with or um, but I had a couple of curveballs of people that really kind of signed up late. They were like, oh, I didn't realize you were going or, <clears throat> you know, whatever the case may be. And I met some amazing people that ended up giving me perspective that I needed. And I didn't realize, you know, we're all kind of that beautiful mess. Right. And I didn't <laughs> realize how much work. I mean, I thought I was doing a pretty good job. And then I got there and I was like, you are just tip of the iceberg, buddy. This is about your body. This is about your head. This is about where you're going with things. And I know that it's making me right for me to have a good, healthy human experience. And it sounds hokey to say it. It sounds very woo-woo to say it. If you told me 15 years ago that this is what I would do for a living, I would have told you you were nuts. But Nobody ever planned to do this. (laughs) Oh my gosh. What did you want to be in your former life? Like, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, I thought I was going to be a nurse and it's really funny, you know, because that's what I thought as a young girl. But of course, in high school, then they're telling you, oh, no, you're not dedicated enough to your education. And I've spent my whole life healing and doing the work. (laughs) Well, I can't think of a better segue to bring up your chart to talk about the most interesting thing about Judy's chart. Here we go. All right. Now that we've got the dates right. Oh my God. I can't believe I sent you the wrong date initially. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm trying to, I, 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 I'm not, whatever. Listen though, if you're ever going to make a mistake on a woman's chart, just make sure that you go make her much younger. <laughs> How am I doing there? I honestly don't care. No. It was so funny. I waited. I was, I kept saying I was like 19 until I turned 40 and I said, wow, that was too much. <laughs> So now I own it. I don't worry about it. <laughs> what, gave, what gave it away? The 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 eighteen year old kid, or you know, whatever. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at the chart here. This is the part where I pull it up. Everybody, uh, you know, you've got you've got this really cool symmetry going on, and you've got this grand trine going on with the, you know, you got that Moon Neptune conjunct. You've got the Chiron healing. This is this is a healer position. Because your Chiron's in the 6th house, but look at all that action in the 11th and 12th house. You know, you are enigmatic, you're charismatic, you're reaching out to people. Um, all of this, I, I mean, gosh, your Sun, the North Node, Uranus, and and Mercury all bunched up here between the 11th and 12th house. And, and it, you know, when you straddle houses like that, when they're all in the same sign and they're conjunct, Holy Toledo, you you're you're a manifester in a lot of ways. I I am. Yeah. And I so, I come up with a thought and it comes into play. I am driven. I allow it to come to be and I and I really do it with heart. I always yeah. do it with for the betterment of not for personal gain and it just it just blossoms. <laughs> I'm so you know, blessed. And listen, that statement doesn't come from it, it's not in a vacuum. Without getting into like the the sully detail, what do you feel you went through to help you understand like, oh, I have that attitude, that last 10 seconds that you just said, what was the thing that made you say, okay, that's, I got to do it this way. Like what really changed your pattern? What really changed your technique and, and made you realize? Everything in my, I mean, you don't do things easy when you're, when you're a healer and you're a light worker, you have been through the fires, you've been through the pits, you yeah. have dug through everything and you have to just really learn to love everybody where they are and who they are. And it takes so much more strength to love. Yeah. So much more strength to love through and to continue to put yourself out there in that vulnerability and to be that blessing, to be a part of that solution for the betterment of all. Yeah. And you know, Judy, it's one of those things where when, you know, you you even shared earlier with, you know, being the Southern Baptist part of it, I mean, so much of it is judgment. 
Like you were, to, you were conditioned to judge others, right? Absolutely. Yes. So for you to say that is like the true healing yeah. mantra. I mean, you know, listen, you, you know, even within your chart, you know, when you talk about, you know, possibly being a nurse or, you know, being able to um, work with people on a regular basis, you also have this Mars placement in the 10th house, you know, your Cancerian uh, uh, 10th house, which is, um, you know, you being the ultimate caregiver. It is you being that person that's going to drive that, you know, drive that ship in caregiving. You're the one that's going to say, listen, you don't see this, but I'm going to make you some soup or something like you're going to be that person. It's in your chart. But the very interesting alignment is how much work that you when you go public, you're about ripping the bandaid off. Like when you deal with the with the with the public, whether it's clients, whether it's, you know, in session or whatever. You're going to walk into it and you're going to say, listen, we're going to be friends by the end of this. I know a lot of people. I'm going to talk to Metatron. I'm going to talk to Michael. We're going to do this the right way. We're going to talk to my shamanic guides. We're going to talk to, we're going to talk to the people that I know to help you because I'm going to pull all my strings. You're a string puller and you're doing it from a spiritual standpoint. Does that make sense? It does. I help them to have access to what they don't even know that it exists. I introduce them when I sit with somebody and I start channeling that angel or whoever that guide is 99% of the time. Oh, I know them. <laughs> they never it, recognized them. They didn't have a name. They didn't understand the significance of that energy in their life and how, what a useful partner that is for them to go forward. You know, and I think, I think you're kind of edging on something too, which is, you know, the, the blanket statement in the spiritual work and the spiritual community has to do with, do you, do you see them? Do you believe in them? Do you, you know, whether you're talking about your guides or anything else and the easy answer that is kind of a blanket statement, but it makes a ton of sense is you see them when you're ready to see them, right? You Absolutely. realize it when you're ready to, to acknowledge it, when you're ready to accept it, when you're ready to work with them, your mind might be blown at first, but you're, you can at least begin to wrap your head around it. Right. Now I'm going to go here. What about light beings? What about the extraterrestrial world? What about the idea that our awakening is just opening up these bridges left and right? How do you feel your work is connected with, with what we've got going on overhead? Well, again, we are all sprinkled with that star seed dust of information from all of these different planets, which what they tell me is that it's all lined up dormant within the crystalline DNA. We are here specific to make the change. That's about right now you're going through this activation process of having access to whatever this information and this connection is. So yeah. yes, you are each a part of, you are learning more from, they are trying to send us such incredible information and guidance and clarity for each of us to be able to move forward in our own paths, because what you can do, no one else can do. No pressure, yeah. but. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the uniqueness of your path and your journey. Yes. You know, yes. I mean, even though I kind of lump people together where it's like, oh, 85% do this and, you know, 15% are this, um, that's still a moving target in so far that guess what? Half of the people are going to be appealed to this and, you know, some people are going to do with that. And it's that combination. And it's funny. I talk about astrology this way, that that when you look at an astrological chart, it's really a great big like safe lock, right? Like, you know, 33 degrees to the left, 44 to the right. 18 to the left, you know, and then you unlock a code of who you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you've had experiences with off planet stuff and angels are off planet, I mean, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. And by the way, spirit in any level is off planet. Like people, people are like, oh, you believe in that? I'm like, I talk to dead people. They're not here. They don't have forwarding <laughs> address, dude. Like, <laughs> right. Like, of course I, they're off planet. They are not of this plane and this plane being 3d. How do you, do you do work regularly in the 5D and the 7D? Like, how do you, how do you stay attuned to it or do you wait for it to come to you still? Oh, no, no, every day. Uh, I, yeah. I work diligently on my work in order for me to be able to maintain the level of connection that I do. That takes a dedicated practice. Every morning when I do my meditation, I really try to strive to go up into that light grid. And so that I can go into that light grid, send out that heart energy. And that's actually how I call my clients in because it's like beaker, beaker, beaker. Yeah. 
to be yeah. we're supposed to come to me and you will get your guidance and your information. And, but it's always people are like, well, I don't know how I even found you. And it's like, I do. <laughs> and yeah, then I, I see do. them and it's like, oh, I recognize you. Oh, cause I, I visit people a lot time during dream time status. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I, I spend a lot of time in other spaces and places, but all to be able to maintain this vibration and energy so that I can help people and quickly move yeah. into whatever they need um, that's of their highest and best. How do you um, how do you use your dream work? Like, is that something you developed? Was it something they just said, hey, listen, when you go to sleep, we'll be there. Like, how did that work? Um, I think it changes. It it, it constantly okay. changes and evolves because a lot of times I'm just mm. um totally gone and and I just tell them when I'm going okay, but just make sure that I come back rested. I don't mind. <laughs> I love how I don't you put mind going and doing. <laughs> well, this is something interesting that I I I think I want to go here with it. How did you develop your relationships with your guides? Because I'm hearing a lot of boundaries with your guides. Like, hey, we can do this, but I got to come back rested um hey gatekeeper come on let's let's make sure we're working together how did you develop your work with your guides how did you build that relationship um I think it was well all right I've always kind of been yeah uh, I've yeah. been a manager person <laughs> you're in charge you're in charge, charge. I've, I've been a manager person I've done government I've done grants I've run nonprofits. I you know I run my nonprofit now so, I mean, I've always been kind of that um, instructor kind of a personality. And so I just move forward exactly with this same type. We are partners. I will be your partner, but you need to respect the boundaries of me. And so when I am, you know, channeling different beings, I'm being very specific. I try to hold it to an hour timeline. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, and they will absolutely work with us and do what we want because it's our free will to be that partner. Yeah. But it's you right. need to be willing to choose to be that partner. It's funny because I've seen so many people be reluctant to the work. And and by the way, this is where people start to self-medicate. This is when people yeah. start to, you know, run away or they get too busy with their work or they whatever. And there's an evolution and a maturity that you need to kind of go along with it. I mean, even when I first got doing this work, I had a thousand one projects, didn't finish one of them. Um, and it was a deflection mode because if I can keep myself busy and then, you know, I finally got to a point where I'm like, if I could finish one thing a day, I'm going to be so much further ahead. And you get that distraction part of it. And then I started to work with my guides and I started to realize why I was so distracted. I was distracted because I would get things that were connected to other people. And sometimes there weren't for me, you know, I would start something and then someone would come along and steal it. And I'm realizing it wasn't for me. It just, it just wasn't the way it was supposed to be. And you know, it's funny, you, you, you mentioned your book uh, earlier and I, I have a little bit of exciting news here. Um, you know, you've got a couple of books out truth, uh, truth beyond and guided by your light. Um, how do they get those? How do you find those right on your website or are they on Amazon? Um, you can do it on, go to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, you know, you can purchase on any of those locations. Um, Balboa books is, uh, where you mm. can actually go ahead and purchase, uh, truth you, beyond. So you, you work, you worked with Balboa, did you? I did. <laughs> that was, that was good. I'll talk to you later about that one. <laughs> Um, no, I think everybody had, I mean, that big, when Louis, you know, when Louis Hay Smith passed away, uh, when Louis Hay passed, it was boy, like you felt it. I felt it when Wayne Dyer passed, I had a dream about him. Well, I was going to his, um, he did the big, uh, festival or whatever the event at convention center in Orlando. In Orlando. And, yeah. And I was there. And he so passed away the weekend before, right? Correct. And during that event, there was a massive rainbow that actually went over the actual event center. And um, oh. Louise was there on that and met so many also awesome, profound people. And again, you know, just going and taking the time to go to those places and to be in those energy vibrations always changes each of you. It it helps you to tune in yeah. <laughs> to get I, more clear. Well, and again, I mean, you know, speaking of how you and I met down in the Spirit Fest there, Mary Ellen said, Brandon, come on down. And then I, I've just met so many great, incredible 
people and people that are authentic. Um, I, I've noticed like, you know, and to give you perspective, like locally, I, you know, like I sell out places and people are always coming to me for a reading. And I felt that if I just always stayed that way, I would, um, I wouldn't grow. Right. That trip was like a feeler for me to be like, I'm supposed to connect with more people along the way. I'm supposed to have a process with things and get to know people and help them understand because I, I first and foremost think of myself as an educator, right? In that stream yes, of consciousness, work with it. what do you need when you need it? 11th house stuff, all that, all that jazz. And it was funny when I met you and you started talking to me about the book, I'm like, I'm like, Oh, I've, I've got a book. And you're like, where? And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. I don't know if you heard this or not, but there was a hurricane. So the publishing house that I went through and they're going to be a, they're going to be a one and done for me. I'm not going to really kind of bring them up. And if I could take their logo off, I would. Um, I had a lot of challenges with them. The hurricane hit the, their printer was in Florida. So, oh, yeah. they, I mean, they, I lost like six weeks on this and you know, all that other stuff. Um, but I wanted to do a little bit of a segue and say, I finally got my, my editors, my, uh, author copy i'm going to get the rest of it here by the end of the week so if you've ordered one you're going to be getting at people uh and then also i found it very cathartic to put my story down you know it's like i i'm doing this show because i want to get to know people and then i think to myself you know i do enough talking as it is no really i do and you know i i want the book to do the talking for me like i wanted to rest so i can move on and i found myself stuck in a rut where i was always telling the same stories and the editor um daryl like said to me she goes i've heard that story like 500 times and now i've seen it in writing she's like you forgot this you gotta add this and so she was great at editing because she was like don't forget this and then i had some proofreaders kind of you know say the same thing but it was it was interesting to me that it was cathartic do you find that when you put it down on paper you're able to leave it or is it something where you're like, oh gosh, what's the next chapter? What's the next thing? Um, Like the first book, Guided by Your Light, that was really about how to grow your spirituality. And so now, of course, many years have passed since I wrote it. And so I know a whole lot more, but it's like, it still feels done. Um, and, yeah. and truth beyond that was so wild because we got together and with a group of people and just asked questions. I dropped into the channeling and we just asked questions. How can I grow my spirituality? How can I get to know my spirit guide and different entities channeled through to give that guidance and information, physical things you could do, spiritual things, you know, emotional things. So it's like, it, it's, living information that will never get old and die. And it even predicted the pandemic because it was uh, just prior to the pandemic. And it was like, that's awesome. your world's going to blow up. Nothing will ever be the same. <laughs> well, and it's interesting. It's funny you should say that. I mean, yep. it's funny you should say that. I'll play it one more time. <laughs> um, I, I have to tell you, when I felt a disturbance in the force, so to speak, coming up to coming up to the pandemic. And I can't tell you how many people sent me messages that did actually record their, their reading. Some of them wrote it down or they would go back and look at the recording, but they would consistently say to me, they were like, boy, did you understand that I was going to go like, and I kept talking about it in like kind of specific vague ways. Like, I don't know what this is, but you're home for a while. I don't know what this is, but you're not traveling. All those plans are canceled. Just know it's to keep you safe. Or I don't know, you know, I'll never forget this one. There was somebody that was in the middle of leaving her husband. And it was, it was a conversation. It wasn't tumultuous. It wasn't mm -hmm. whatever. It was very much like, we're going to get to it when we get to it. And this is where we're at. And she came to me in January and I said, if you're not out by March, I go, it's not going to happen. Does she not send me a message in April saying I should have listened to you because here I am being his wet nurse still, you know, it was all their problems were coming out again. But it was funny because it was coming up for me, but I never used the word pandemic. I don't want to take credit for something I didn't. Right. No, no, no. I didn't use that word either. But yeah. it was like, but I knew, again, the fall, you, those those three huge eclipses that went oh. through fall, winter of 19. Right up us. Right up us. Yeah, I all first... of us. And. Holy and so crap. many people now they're like, oh my God, I've been awakening, awakening because they got a chance to stop. They were told they could think they actually had an ability to, to look and to see and to realize yep. and to, to experience self. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. And and I actually, you know, I watched people. I I, I think I pride myself on uh, as an observer. And I really observe some people panicking. I watch some people try and become political. I watch some people try and become medical experts. I watch some people turn to their spirituality. I was never busier, by the way. And and the pandemic was the best thing that happened to me from a business standpoint. It freed me up from a lot of things. And then, and again, I, I mentioned the Spirit Fest. Um, if you're anywhere in Florida, you have to get this on your calendar. I've got uh, I've got the link for Spirit Fest down below. Um, Mary Ellen does a great job. I've I've been doing these shows for a really long time. And, you know, I can divide that up very clearly. There's the people that just see they can make money at it. And then there's people that are genuine about how they're doing it. And Mary Ellen and her team, like they, they know their stuff. Like I didn't, Absolutely. I was, at, I was out of town. I was whatever. And I had good contact. Um, people knew like, Hey B, you know, we're doing this, we're doing this. You want in, you want out. It, it was like, I felt like I was part of a community there. Um, and the vendors were really cool. I mean, the vendors were cool. Um, you know, I didn't meet every They're reader. Quality. But... They are quality. She vets yeah. them. You know, they they really look to make sure that the readers have been doing it a long time, that they know what yep. they're doing. There's a nice variety of different wares that come in. You know, we travel all around the state of Florida. She's looking at moving into the East Coast this next year. <laughs> Now we're coming to New York. More on that, more on that later. Yeah, you know. but I'll be in Lilydale. Um, I've I've got oh. my confirmed dates. So yeah. When are you, the, when are you uh, coming to Lilydale? Let's let's plan I, it. Um, the twenty first, twenty second, and twenty third. I will be hosting three different workshops in Lilydale. On in June, uh, July, or July, uh, July, July, July. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So I just got my dates yesterday. So yay. <laughs> and uh, so, so you're also big with the Casadega community down in Florida as well. So that's the connection. That was, and those of you that don't know, Lily Dale's in Western New York. It's about five hours away from me here. I'm in upstate, uh, just outside of Albany. And uh, Casadega is just outside of Orlando. Yeah, or is it, yeah, yeah. It's north of Orlando. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta you gotta hook me up. By the way, I've got a great story. Uh, and by the way, Judy, when I send you, you know, a copy of my book, so you can get to know me better. Um, my story in Lilydale, you're going to read it and just be like, you're, f you're crazy. Like my teacher was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, ah, you know, I was like, I was like the mediumship Oprah. I'm like a reading for you and a reading for you. And you know, and it was like, oh yeah, calm down. Well, yeah. While we were there, we had the ladies of the Dale, all the, the spirits, the ladies of the Dale come oh. marching into the room where I was at and I channeled so a message and they were so cool. They're talking about the reason why they continue to haunt the place is because they're still teachers and educators. And this one woman, her name was Lillian and she was going on and on and on about things. And we go downstairs and there's her picture and there's her date. She's like, you should have seen me back in the forties. And everything was just dead on. And it was just so cool to get those affirmations and confirmations but there's a That's lot so of visitors cool. there in the dale <laughs> that is so cool on many yeah. realms <laughs> yeah i had i had great i had great healing experiences too there it was yeah oh my gosh like i at the time i was there was uh, uh they had a tibetan monk healing oh yes it was their yes, opening yeah. weekend and i listen i saw the best of spirituality i saw some stuff that uh, that were cautionary tales you know, know, some, some, from some professionals, I was just like, Whoa, what's that? And, I, but I think it's like, I think sometimes people get stuck on the criticism of it, or we have to remember that when people see like an insight into something, into this world, they have to be willing to say, Oh, there's something more to it. So we have to be a welcoming soul. And I met some people that weren't welcoming. Like they saw me as competition and I'm like, all, I know. all right. You know, like, okay. And that, that happens, and that that's happens their a lot. The, and yeah. that happens and that will always be their barrier that will always hold them back if you there is so much that is available to help every single person and we are unique and different so if we can really be that community for each other to support each other then we all win it's funny even the person who and i and i I mentioned her name but very few people will know her i'm not going to mention it now she um she she had an authoritarian role at uh, I shouldn't say authoritarian she she had some clout in that group and she came up to me afterwards she said that was amazing I said thank you and she said don't ever do that again and I went <laughs> I went did you just encourage me and then push me back down she said 
she said, yeah, she said, you're going to rub some people the wrong way. And I said, well, that's their problem. She goes, it is their problem. I'm just, but I'm going to do my job and tell you that I think you have this everything, you know, and, and by the way, anytime I say I stand behind everything I just said, it was because she said to me, she goes, I'm going to stand by my initial reaction to you. And that is that you're a developing light. You're somebody that's coming out. She said, I'm going to stand by that, but I'm also going to tell you, you still got lessons to learn. And this is one of them. You don't, you don't, you don't read everybody at the stump. You, you leave a little yeah. for others. And I went, I went, that was so loving. And then she goes, right. And I go, can I come back? And she goes, well, <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> oh, can, can we, right why don't you, why don't you, why don't you cook a little more? Why don't you go back in the oven for a few more minutes? Like <laughs> get a little cuter. Uh, that was a Juno reference, everybody. So, but it's, it's so, it's so positive and it's so, you know, I've had I've had those moments that were cringeworthy, but still came out positive. And, you know, and I'm hearing from you being self-directed. Now, did you have any one particular teacher or did you have a series of teachers? Like, how do you feel like teachers presented themselves to you? Teachers came in many different ways. I mean, I spent a long time with Reverend Steve Adkins at the People's Church of Divine Prophecy. And so I, you know, played co-pastor and then ended up taking over the church. But all kinds of visiting people came on a regular basis. So that really allowed me a sampling of all different kinds of individuals in this area. But, and yeah. I obviously went to school, you know, I went to classes in um, Casadega. I attend classes in Delphi University. I've done all kinds yeah. of online stuff, shamanic stuff, you know, yeah. and so it's, it's all about, and what they're so clear with me about, it's like you go out and learn tips, tools, and techniques from all these different people, but you have to figure out how to create your own alphabet. And that is the information that works for you and how it's going to work with you for your highest connection, because the greatest teacher you will ever have is your connection. <laughs> well, and didn't we just talk about that in your chart? Yeah. Every, it, that is the greatest teacher you will ever have is your connection, but then you have to learn to trust it and you have to be yeah. able to understand what they're saying to you so that you can interpret it and utilize it for your highest capability. And as soon as you think you have it captured and you know what's going on, they're going to change it <laughs> because Reverend, you're always evolving. <laughs> Reverend Judy Weaver, connection is your greatest teacher. Yes. That should be your next book. All right, then. <laughs> I've got two more that I'm in the process of writing. That oh, my God. We should, we, should, we should talk about that. We should talk help, about help, that. Help, help. You, you, know, you know that, like, well, true to form, true to form, like, <sighs> I'm going to start a publishing company because I saw oh. how this worked. And I saw like what happened and what I, I mean, I literally, I, I, I don't want to sully anything. I, I don't want to jinx anything, but it was, I just saw the challenges. I'm like, this is an easy fix. Like I kept saying, this is an easy fix. I don't know why I can't connect with somebody. I don't know why I can't just get resolution on this. And it was the smallest stuff. And I get that everybody's like in CYA mode. Like the, the, the CYA oh, yeah. thing is so prevalent. I'm seeing it. You know, my son just had a challenge in school and everything was CYA. And I'm like, Okay, but what are we going to do differently? What are we? Yeah, gonna how do are we going to fix it? What else can we? What are <laughs> we going to do? With a solution. What are we going to do? Let's not come up with a complaint. <laughs> you know, my expectation was that you would find resolution because, you know, listen, when a kid does something wrong in school, it's not in a vacuum. Like it didn't happen. You know, either it happened because they didn't know the rules. You know, step one, let's make sure the rules are in place. Step two, was there an influence that would you know prohibit him from following the rules? And then step three is this something bigger that I have to kind of tackle. Well, when I can't get past one or two, I can never get to number three. And as a as a parent, I'm like, that's not cool. As a spiritual teacher, as a spiritual path worker, you have to, but you know, people people think we're all woo-woo and we're actually much more scientific <laughs> than what people give us credit for. Because think, think about what you're doing in a reading. You're delivering a reading. And I sound like a crazy person until you say, that's my grandfather to a T. And as soon as you say that, it becomes validation. We're testing it. We're being scientists. We're giving you, you know, we're using the alchemy of words for you to say, this is what it looks like, right? And I, I think it's I think it's amazing. And I, I've seen your work and I've done your work. I, now, let me ask this question. Are you only in person? Do you do it online? Like when people set this up and they go to uh, your website, 
what are they going to find to book a reading? Do they have to be in person or can it be online? No, no, no. You can do Zoom as well as in person. And again, mm -hmm. I do travel. So, you know, when I'm going like uh, in January, I'll be over in St. Petersburg. So if there's another group who wants to do something over in St. Petersburg, let me know. I let them, you know, I, I travel all around the state of Florida. I work in Georgia. Um, I go up to New York um, and yeah. I will be going to Peru again. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's wherever I'm being guided. Yeah. And it looks like I may end up going to Ireland this summer as well in uh, early July. So yeah, I'm spirit is just like, let's go girl. <laughs> so you're going to be a great, your Shania Twain song. So, um, so in, um, in Ireland, possibly in July and then in upstate New York in later July. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll get yeah. you at the airport kid. I'll help you. <laughs> know. Um, you know, New York, I, it's funny. People think New York is like just the city. It's not like, it is massive. Yeah. It, it, it is a whole other thing. It's a whole other. It's kind of like just saying, you know, like when you enter into Florida, when you're driving down and you're like, oh, how far to the Keys? Another four hours, four and a half hours. You're like, what? Now you can take all of New England plus <laughs> from Florida. You drive in Florida for a long time. Mm. Two days is not, you, you know, if you started in the panhandle and went across and down and people are like, well, why don't they all evacuate for those hurricanes? Because you get stuck on the road and you can't even get out. <laughs> There's only so many roads after, after driving them uh, a couple of times uh, already this year, I was kind of, uh, although I have to tell you, I was, I can't believe how much commerce I mean, I get it, but there is a lot of commerce in Florida, like a lot of co like one mall after another and then gated communities and then, you know, strip mall, strip mall, strip mall, gated community, gated community, strip mall, strip mall. Like, yeah, and so like, many. Wow. And let me tell you, the pandemic, holy mackerel, the number of people that increase moving to Florida, they're like, if I'm going to get trapped, I'm going to go where it's warm and I can walk outside. And so, um, and again, the flexibility of changing the work schedules and working from anywhere and all kinds of businesses, you know, closing down big buildings. They're just working from wherever they want to be. Where do you want to live? So what, you you're say what you're saying is, is go explore Savannah. <laughs> go explore New Cape York Hatteras. Is not <laughs> well, New York also has, a, it's funny. I, I always laughed about this because people, <laughs> People up here, they're like, oh, my gosh, we're, we're so taxed and we're so, you know, we're so overburdened and the state sales tax and everything else. And, and uh, OK, the cost of living in comparison is like two. It's it, it's like when you start to wash it all out. Yeah, it doesn't get taken out of your paycheck. But when you go to the pump, it gets taken out there. When you go there, it gets taken out. And I, and I just laugh. I'm like, you fell for the classic blunder of misinformation, which is you didn't have all the facts and you only made it with the smallest amount of facts. Um, but if you go for the sunshine or because you know people and it's a different, it is a different lifestyle. I will say that. Where else have you lived in the world? Like I, I know. Um, I was born in New Hampshire, lived in yeah. Vermont. I lived in Florida, um, went back up to Connecticut for like 24 years. That's where I raised my children. And, um, and I, I was just like, Oh, let me get back to Florida. Let me get back to Florida. <laughs> It's been a long time and I finally did. And, and, um, it was just, it was home. It was home. And I've been down here again now since 2000. And so, um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting up to when I add up my years, I'm almost half my life here. Now. <laughs> so I might be considered a Floridian sometime along. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you, I, I think you're, if there's one thing I'm going to say that you are always, and that is a light bound earthling, like you, you just embrace, you light up the room, you light up the conversation. Oh, I, I watched you do it. I watched <laughs> you do your work, um, you know, in two different, two different events and you're just a real deal. Judy, like, well, thank you. I'd love to do a little message for the group. If you oh, let's do, can let's I do, do that? The, can yeah. I break into do a little channel? Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> no. let's do that. No, 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 no. Let's do that. And then of course, everybody tunes in for the five good minutes. So we want to do okay. that. We'll, we'll wrap up with that. So why don't we get a little sample of your work with a little channel here? Okay. Um, since you spoke of Metatron, Metatron does want to mm, come in. Shows up. Of course. <laughs> you knew that because you work with Metatron kinda, all the yeah, time. Kind of, kind of. I've done a little. I've done, I've done a little angel communication myself. I'm just saying. I, don't, I, I, don't I know, know I and know. I just have to go ahead and show his little, uh, his little. Uh, you know, there you go. <laughs> I don't use the word dabble often, but here we are. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. So.
Metatron here. Ah, welcome to each on this auspicious day. I specifically come to speak to each of you to invite you into a world beyond, a world of greatness, capacity, <laughs> an expansion of consciousness that will always guide you into a greater essence of self. It is about allowing yourself to see, to see beyond the eyes, to see with the emotions, and to tap into the energies of the world around you, to embrace the potential, the possibilities, and the new energies that are emerging through that presence within you and guiding you to a greater essence thereof. Go forth with joy and delight and abundance and allow your soul to receive that brilliance of love that is shining so bright through the center of thee. You are the master of your own universe. Allow yourself and your soul to soar into that majesty of and purity of heart love. Many blessings, precious, precious ones. Many blessings to thee. So coming back. <laughs> oh, it's so jiggly. <laughs> Sorry. I love your laugh. Your oh, laugh is contagious. It's just, like, it's just like all through everything when they come and go. Okay, I'm good now. Oh. Well, you're going to stay right there because now we're going to go into the five minutes, five good minutes okay. with the stream of consciousness. I want you to stay right in that mindset. Here we go. All right, are you ready? I put five minutes on the clock and I just give you random questions about things and you have literally five seconds to answer. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. I got my clock ready and here we go. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, what's your favorite chakra and why? My favorite chakra is solar plexus oh isn't that interesting not what i would have expected solar plexus really works specifically with all of your systems and all of your bodies so it really and it also is your major sensor when you're going in and out of places so there's so much more power that is emitted through your solar plexus than you could have imagined and i actually just recently had a large triangle inserted um spiritually was that too long of an answer keep, go keep going i'm just gonna <laughs> Okay. And and it's um, specifically to be able to um, receive much more information more quickly to assimilate. Coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> Favorite movie of all time? Um, Pretty Woman. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, little, 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 little little Madonna complex on that one. Uh, you're on a you're on a dessert. Julia Roberts. You're on yeah, same answer then. Um. Deserted Island, one artist that you get their playlist. Who are you listening to? On the Deserted Island? Yep, you can only bring <laughs> one artist, one Oh, one artist musician. to a Deserted Island with me. Yeah, like in other words, and there you're just going to get their playlist. That's the only thing you can listen to. Oh, a Kenny G. Really? You just it really... <laughs> Really, Kenny G, all that inspiration, you just want background noise. I get it. I understand. Because I, I like to stay in that space. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I do, do, do. Where's a place you want to visit and haven't yet? Well, Ireland, of course. Oh, yes. Ireland. Okay. So, you've never yes. been there. I got you. Okay. All right. Um, how many times have you ever wanted to stop a reading? I don't know if I ever have. So you you just handed it over right away. Okay. Yeah, because the thing is, I if it's not going the way I want it to, then I take a breath 
and allow for them to give whatever else they need to have. Favorite so, ice cream. Favorite ice cream. Strawberry. Oh, yeah. You know what? You you were born in New Hampshire, weren't you? <laughs> well, butter pecan, I really love too. So it was that's a the other, That's the other New England answer. <laughs> okay. Got it. Got it. Um, have you ever been fishing? Yes. Have you ever been hunting? I don't think so. Oh. I am not shooting hunting. So gotcha. what would be hunting? I hunt for things in the woods, but not necessarily I love like it. I to love kill animals. I love that you went there. I love that you went there. It's like a classic shaman trick is in like, you know, either you say, yes, I have. And I use the whole animal or yeah, I found mushrooms. Like, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can hunt. Yeah. <laughs> um, are any of your ch children gifted? Yes. Uh, do you feel you're their teacher? I feel that they're watching from the sideline. <laughs> what tarot card best describes you? Um. Well, I don't use the tarot deck. I use angel cards, so I'm going to go with the angel. <laughs> okay, which, which angel card best describes you? What card best um, describes you? Not angel, but the card itself when it describes it. The card itself, I probably would go with um, Ariel with Joy. So, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Um, how many times have you left your body? I don't know how many, a whole lot. Yeah. I would think one of the first three. times I remember was when yeah. I was actually giving delivery of my oldest son and it was 35 labor hours. It was ridiculous. And I remember like mm -hmm. looking down and seeing this woman in writhing pain and thinking, wow, that's a horrible, I'm so glad I'm not her. And then I said, oh my God, it is me. And I was right back in. And so that was my, my first real conscious. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, first concert you ever went to? I think Ario Speedway. <laughs> Take it on the run, baby. Uh, what was the last dream you remember about you? Um... I don't remember my dreams very often. Oh, okay. I very rarely remember my dreams because I'm working and going and doing things. So, um, yeah. How, ma how many half-finished journals have you started but not finished? Well, I've got two right now. No, no, no. Not books. on Journals. Books. Ones that you write in and then you just never go back to it. People, oh, people are I, notorious for starting journals and never. Well, I, I go back to them. So I've probably got about eight journals. That's kind of cool, actually. All right. Well, that's five good minutes, everybody. I think that was, I, I loved your answer. Boy, you went all over the place. It's kind of a little rapid fire. And you're like, and by the way, I've had implants. Like, what's going on with you? What is that, Judy? My gosh, way to take it down. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, listen, I, you know, I want to thank you for being a part of things here. And like I said, I've met some amazing people and I, I really kind of developed this platform to tell your story, but learn more about Judy at her website, you know, book her directly. If this speaks to you, great. If it doesn't, oh, okay. You're going to find other things that really kind of resonate with you. But I will tell you that one of my vetting processes was really to kind of tell how people really are and tell, you know, how people are the real deal and when they're connected. Um, I'm glad you gave us a sampling of that because I've got to tell you, I walked right into that the first time I'm like, you know, I'm like one eye open. And I remember I looked over at Jonathan, um, who's, who's kind of your, your Padawan, if you will. Like he's, he's, he's real. I love that guy. That dude, yeah, he's great. That he's dude great. is coming around and I, I just kind of do like a one eye and I look over at him and he does one of these. He's like, right. Yeah, that's the real thing. <laughs> yeah, and her head didn't spin off, but yeah, yeah, it's the real thing. <laughs> it was, and, and you know, and it's funny because it's like, listen, we all have a little bit of showman in what we do and how you do it, but when you're in it, it's so, you like you own it. Like, and that's when you can really tell somebody's like genuine to, to the pieces of it. And it was great though, because when Jonathan kind of did like his one, eye, you know, when I did my one eye to him, I could tell like one of the things that he gets out of this is to watch people receive what's going on. Oh, and yeah. I think that's sometimes half of the battle with a lot of this stuff is receiving what's going on. And I, I want to thank you for being a part of things. And as we sign off, I don't know if you, you know, this on my, on my conversations, we always do the heart tap, but I'm on the stream of consciousness. You get to dedicate your heart tap to uh, who do you want to dedicate it to? Oh, I love 
that. You know what? I am going to do my heart tap to Mother Earth. I am really going to send that love out to Mother Earth so it feeds everybody. You just went full shaman on us. That's so I I had so to. Hot. That's just, <laughs> but you feel that right now? Hold on, hold on. Here we go. I think that was a hard tap. Did you just cause another <laughs> earthquake on the other side of the world? Cut that out, Judy. All right, guys, we're going to give the heart tap, and this one's going out to Mother Earth, and we remind Mother Earth <laughs> that we love and care for one another, and we remind each other to simply keep going. Thank you so much, Judy, for being a part of things. Hang on. Thank you. All right. <laughs> 